Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Digital Painter Vidcast. My name is Terry Dana Jakimak II, and I am the Digital Painter. This week we're going to be looking at Corel Painter 2016. Now if you don't have Corel Painter, that's fine. Uh, you can watch the video. Uh, some of the things that you see in this video, you'll actually be able to apply to other, uh, other uh, digital art programs. But, uh, but I'm going to focus on Corel Painter 2016 because, well, that's what I have open and that's what I want to work with. Um, if you have questions about this, feel free to contact me either on the YouTube page. You can leave a message uh, in the comments. I generally respond within a week, week and a half. Or you can actually stop by thedigitalpainter.com and leave me a message there. My email address is available on the site and I'd be more than happy to chit chat with you. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. So what we're looking at is we're looking at the canvas for Corel Painter. Now, other programs that use canvas as an underlayer are things like ArtRage um, and uh, to a certain extent, Rebel Watercolor. Uh, these are a couple others, but this is the one we're looking at today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here and we're gonna do a new file, okay? And I wanna talk to you a little bit about what we see here. What we're looking at is th this is gonna come out pretty much with any, pro any digital program that you do, a new file, and there's some things that you need to do. First thing you need to do is name it. I'm not naming this anything other than Untitled 3 right now. Uh, underneath that, we have Canvas Preset. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Underneath there, oh, and there we go, we have noises from the nether. Underneath there, we have several things that we are indeed going to look at. You have your width and your height. That's uh, right now we're in inches. If you click this button, you see you can switch to pixels, inches, centimeters, points, picas, or columns. I'm usually using inches or pixels. I don't, I don't use any of the other settings. Uh, if it's something that you work in that you're comfortable with, feel free to adjust to any of those. And then, of course, you put the numbers in there. So right now we're seven inches wide by five inches tall. If I'm working on something that's going to be printed, I generally work in inches. If I'm working on something that's going to be a web uh, version, whether it's a, a digital image that's going to stay digital, uh, then I'm going to generally do it in pixels. Underneath there, we have our resolution. The resolution is important uh, more so if you're going to be printing something. You need something with a high resolution for it to print nicely. Now this is 300 pixels per inch. You also have pixels per centimeter. Notice how there's not pixels per pixels or pixels per picas or any of those other. It's always pixels per inch, pi pixels per centimeters. Mine's at 300. If I'm going to be printing something out, I generally do anywhere between 250 and 600. Now Understand, if your computer's not up to snuff, 600 is going to slow your computer down a little bit. So just be aware of that. Uh, right now, we're going to leave this as 300. You can do, yeah, like I said, you can do pretty much anything you want here. Uh, if I'm doing something for the web, then what I'm probably going to be setting at is 72 or 96 uh, pixels per inch. Okay? So we have this set up there. On the right, you'll see we have a color and a paper. The color is actually the color of your paper. You know, when you go to an art store, you can purchase uh, colored paper, right? And I don't like drawing on straight white. When you're drawing on straight white, it feels uh, you don't have a way to put in highlights because you're already the brightest there is. So I like to work on a middle gray if I'm doing something that is uh, not watercolor based. Now, if I'm doing something watercolor based, I will do white because of the translucency that is required in regards to watercolor. But because I'm just showing you how this works, we're going to stay at my mid gray and you can really change it to any color. I mean, you could have a, you know, if you wanted a blue background, you could have a blue background. I usually use the third gray over. So we have white one, two, third gray. So I've gone as far as this, this middle gray right here. Then you click OK when you're done. Okay, and then the paper texture, and this is the texture of the paper. You'll see this also in ArtRage. If you use ArtRage, the ability to change the texture of the paper. So what we have here is we have several, you know, from the basic paper, small dots. We have artists' rough paper, into the watercolor paper, stuff like handmade and cold press. And then down here we have some 2015s like long string rice and 
I keep hitting the button relief and basket weave. We're going to start right here with cold press watercolor to kind of show you what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm going to click OK. And you'll see we have our image. Now, one of the things that I forgot to do, and I feel terrible for not having said this, whoo, going too big, is when you do a new file, you can also pick presets. The presets that come with it with 2016 are Particle Brushes, Painter Default, and Portrait. And then I've added all these other presets that I usually work in, uh, Portrait Landscapes 8x10s, 5x7s, and then actually a 1920x1080, which is computer dimensions at 72 dpi, okay? And to do that, all you, all you essentially do is you hit the plus button. Once you have all your bottom settings here, you hit the plus button, and then you name it. We're not going to do that right now. All right, so we're going to be working in digital watercolor, so I can show you exactly what we're seeing. Now, to be able to change your paper, you need to go to Window, because you can change paper in the middle of, of your uh, painting. Go to Paper, and you want to open up your Paper Panel. And I'm going to put that right over here so that I have it available. I can decrease my layers. I'm not going to be using that many layers. There we go. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to cycle through so I can bring up my brush size. I'm going to zoom in, so don't fret. So you can see the texture there, right? All the little white dots. All of that is the texture on the paper. And if I move over here, and in my Papers panel, I switch to a different texture, now we have a different texture underneath. Now you're probably asking, does the other texture change? No. See that there? So this is the second texture. This is the first texture. Whatever you paint, so that means you could have multiple textures. So I could now come over here and put, it's got a different texture over top of that texture. If I wanted to, I could add a layer and actually layer textures. So you can see in this area, we have layered the textures. We have the first texture and the second texture. Where I went over on the same layer, it replaced the texture. So you can have multiple textures on a piece. I could now come in, let's change to another texture, add another layer, same color. And you can't see it there because we have too much going on, but this is the next texture. But that's in here. You can see it right in there. Okay, there's some bumpy bumpies right right in this area. Some bumpy bumpies. That's technical terms for texture. Okay. Now, as you zoom out, you can see we can see this texture a little better than this texture. But what would it look like if, if there's, you know, no texture? Let's see, what's the flattest we got here? A hot press. which unfortunately looks very much like the cold press. I think they uh, didn't pay too much attention to that. Here's soft press. It's a little different. Let's go into our polka dots. Oops. Zoomed in just a little too much there, didn't I? There we go. There's our polka dots underneath. Now, understand this doesn't work with every type of brush. So if I were to, for example, let's see. That's digital watercolor. I'm going to go up to acrylics and we'll just do kind of a a real long bristle acrylic. Notice how we can't see the texture in here. That's because there's texture on the brush. Okay, now if I go over an area that already has texture down, we do indeed see the texture. Okay, see it in there? We can see it below it. Um, but one of the things that you could do, oops, gotta go backwards. I'm gonna turn off these two layers. I'm gonna add a layer. I'm gonna have this texture here. I'm gonna grab a tool. I just don't know which one yet. Not that one. Hmm. 
Don't you love it when you look over here? Oh. Now notice here, no texture happens if you just do the fill tool. That's important. So if you want the texture to fill a screen, you can't just use the fill tool. Instead, what you have to do, and I'm going to undo that, is you have to go in and you have to brush, essentially brush the texture on. I'm going to go to the fine-tipped watercolor again. I'm going to increase my size, though, to much larger. And you see the texture does show up there. So if you and so if you do want texture, you can brush it over the entire thing. And as we zoom out, you can see it a little bit. But what if we wanted to see it even better? Well, over in our papers box, you see I'm increasing and decreasing a slider. That slider is our paper scale. So I'm going to take our paper scale up to 350%. And look at that. And there we go. We now have the texture over the entire paper. And the texture stays visible. I'm just doing a couple of digital watercolor strains down there. Digital, digital, I think I've gone digital, digital. Ooh, look at that green. Okay, so we can see it underneath. Oh, and there's that noise again. I think, I think people are talking to me. But w what about some of the other things? So for example, what about our real watercolor? Well, let's turn everything off. Turn it way up, see if it shows up. And you'll see it does not. Okay, so the paper texture in Corel Painter is not necessarily going to be useful for everything. Okay, now let me see. If I go in, and take this, I turned it on multiply. I mean, we could have left it on gel. Let me put it back to gel. Okay. And then we zoom in. Let me pull it over here. You'll see that using watercolor, if there's a texture already down, it is, it, you will see it through the watercolor. OK? So if I grab this color here, switch to my brush, I am using real watercolor. And I paint a little bit. We do see it there. And it starts to show up a little bit too, but not as much as what it does for some of the other things. You can faintly see it. You see it faintly there? Okay. It's not as prominent as it is with some of the other ones. So if we switch back to our doop de doo, this one, and bring this way up. It's there. You can see it there. But again, it's not going to be as prominent as, for example, the digital watercolor. What, so why, why use texture? Why use texture? Well, when you paint, you know, when you're doing uh, natural media, your paper is indeed textured. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new one. We're going to go ahead and switch this to rough watercolor. I'm just going to grab a color. I'm actually going to play a little bit here. But what it does is it gives you that feeling of natural media. It gives you that um, uh, the mimicry of what it would look like if it was, you know, if it was pulled out here. 
uh, in real life. So if I increase a little bit, we can see. I do love these colors. You know, sometimes you just kind of pick random colors. The good thing about it in this, when you're doing the watercolors, the real watercolors, is it it's a little more realistic. It doesn't feel quite so convoluted. Here I'm adjusting. You can adjust the paper contrast. So if I go up real high, you can adjust the paper brightness. OK. Um, if we go back, let me go back to our, this one, ooh, too big, too big, let me take that smaller, too small, they're mowing my lawn, that's crazy, see some of the texture right there, okay, um, if we were to take our brightness back down, that texture is still visible, we take this down, our contrast, notice how the paper texture isn't quite as noticeable. In fact, I've taken it so low that it's almost not noticeable at all. I bring it back up, and now we can see it again. Okay, So you can play with all of these. You can even invert. See how it's changing? It inverts the dark and the lights, right? So which is essentially the peaks and the valleys. Here's handmade laid paper. Again, you can see the texture. If we bring that texture up really high, you can see it even better. So again, this is something that you can play with to and here's here are the libraries. If you you know if you ever want to just look at the libraries, uh, this is something that you can play with to achieve different effects in Corel Painter. And again, there are other uh, other programs also have this ability. Uh, more specifically, ArtRage. So uh, so definitely go in there and play with it. See what you come up with. You're gonna find like I've found is that some of these I like better than others. So I'm going to actually do a new one. We're going to go straight white this time. We're going to do this one. Click OK. I'll click OK. And you can see it. It's much clearer in the white. You can actually see it a little better now when I use the real watercolor. You can see all that texture. OK. So your color of paper is going to affect how it's seen. Hmm, let's and we could take we could take that down a little bit, but you, you actually that actually creates a lovely effect, you know. You know, it's just like if you're if you're using watercolor. All right, that's it for this week. We were we talked about the paper, the paper in Corel Painter 2015, 2016, and um, you know how you can use it to create uh, the feeling of real natural media. Okay. Uh, my name is Terry Dana Chikimiak II. I'm the Digital Painter. Uh, definitely check out my website at thedigitalpainter.com. You can also find me on YouTube if you're not watching this on YouTube. And that is at, um, you know what? I don't even know what my YouTube is. But if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe and you'll get emails. All right. Well, that's it for this week. I hope that uh, you enjoyed the video and uh, take care.